What else grinds you go about people? Small posh men with attitude problems. There you go, right? <laughs> Passed the naked man earlier. En route to get the new mystery car. And I'm hoping posh Tim is going to pick me up from the station in Reading and he's going to drive me the rest of the way there to go and pick up this car. You remember posh Tim. How do you do? Are you telling well? Good show. Go and find Mr. Posh. So after months of F off the road, you idiots! <laughs> so after months of lockdown, I finally reunited with the posh twat. Or do I have to call you Tim today because you're doing me a favour? Um, um, <laughs> I was say. Finally reunited with the posh twat. Uh, it's been about three months, and he's very kindly agreed to drive me to pick up the latest snot box uh, to add to the collection. Um, do I have to call you Tim today because you're doing me a favour? You call me anything you like. Wow, I need to think about that then. face, and also motherfucker, stain. I draw the line under that one. Jizzard. <laughs> so I haven't actually been through all the cars that we've got dotted around, most of them at home and some dotted elsewhere, but I've decided to buy another one to add to it anyway. Um, this one was a car I learnt to drive in. My dad had one. Uh, most people are going to think it's a real bag of snot and why on earth would you buy one? Um, an extremely boring car. So I've got the most boring person I could find to take me to it. Ah! Um, you can go off someone, you know. Uh, oh, I know. So I bought a 1989 Volvo 740 GLE. Sexy! That is what we are driving yeah. all this way to pick up. <laughs> yeah. Not a Bentley. Not a Bentley, no. Not a Porsche. Not a Porsche. Volvo 740 GLE, lock up your daughters. You can have a drive in it. <laughs> I'll take you out. Yeah. This is one of the most reliable cars, aside from the Mercedes 300D of the 80s, this is one of the most reliable cars ever made. Now, you'll like the story. Um, the girl advertised, the lady advertising the car uh, didn't really put the mileage on, she took a photograph of the speedometer which showed 71,000 miles. Uh, when I spoke to her she said she thought it had been around the clock four times, but I said that would mean it's done 4,071,000. Um, the car belonged to her granddad, uh, who passed away unfortunately, and uh, we don't have an awful lot of information on it apart from a massive service file. I checked all the MOT certificates going back to 2006 when they start online, and it just shows a couple of thousand miles a year. So. As far as I was aware when I was buying it, it's either done 71,000 uh, or 4 million and 71,000. Uh, but then it transpires that after checking the service history, uh, she thinks her granddad had a new speedometer fitted after doing 360,000 miles. So we think that the mileage is around 471,000 miles. Now it doesn't, matter, it doesn't really make a difference with these cars whether it's 71,000 or 471, as when we get our hands on it, I will show you. So, um, what's your problem with Volvos? No problem. Really interesting cars. Um, very safe. Um, high performance. Um, this is forgot desirable. Square. Uh, nothing to say <laughs> about Volvos. Do you want to borrow it? No. Is it because you're married and you afraid of all the uh, the legions of women coming running after you when you're I'll tell you what, the XC90 was a great car when that came out. Yeah, this is a bit before that. That sort of revolutionised SUVs for a while, didn't it? Family SUVs. But the new ones are so expensive. How did it revolutionise them? Because people could get seven seats in a car that wasn't too Land Rover-y. Um, 
and it didn't cost a huge amount of money compared to a lot of uh, expensive 4x4s. Oh, am I boring? I was going to point out though yeah. that um, uh, uh, PT, for short, Porsche Twan, actually has two cars. Lexus Jeep and this rather splendid Volkswagen Polo and uh, I'm paying the fuel to go and collect this car today so guess which one I opted for? How many miles per gallon do you get out of the Lexus? <coughs> 19. 19 miles per gallon. It's not, it's not a hybrid. No, it's not a hybrid. So I must admit your, um, your lockdown haircut is much better than mine. I'm guessing you didn't do yours yourself like I did. This hasn't been done for three months. So I've managed to kind of self-do my hair. Strangely enough, one of my teachers in school had the exact same haircut. And she was one of the best rugby players <laughs> I've ever seen. Can you imagine if we get there and it's absolutely mint? Oh, I'm hoping so. Apparently he's had the uh, reconnalised, the leather all redone, and the roof What does reconnalised mean? He's had the leather all restored. Okay. Um, and he's had the roof lining redone as well. So I'm hoping it's a sign that it's been well looked after at Volvo. Yeah. He's owned it from new. Um, anyway, if he's had that kind of thing done, hopefully it's just you know, tip top for a half a million miles. So you want to stop for McDonald's and you get safe? McDonald's is safe. You don't trust the people sneezing and licking the box? And I then, love, I and love then, the people in McDonald's. And snotting in your burger before they give it to you and you're no, not going to get COVID. I love them. They, they, they don't exist in the McDonald's that I buy my McDonald's at. Which one is that? All of them. <laughs> Ronald is a personal so, friend. So, so you're happy to, you, you want to eat McDonald's? Yeah. I haven't had a McDonald's for four months. That's why you're still alive. They're going to touch COVID's it with their, gone. They're going to touch it with their COVID hands. COVID's and, gone. And you're going to touch it with your, you're going to get COVID, and you're going to eat the COVID. COVID's gone. It's been wiped out. If any McDonald's execs are watching, don't sue me. I'm only kidding. In fact, I secretly love McDonald's. See? Every time I end up shooting a video with, with a mate, it always seems to be in a Volkswagen Polo. <laughs> the Polo snot box that we took across Europe with Sid, and now, finally reunited after Covid, we're in a Polo. This is true. I don't know why that's interesting. <laughs> it's not, is it? Yeah, basically you've become a Volvo driver yeah. already. Hello. Nice house, wonderful fire exits you have. This Volvo has been actually, I bought it three months ago, but just as lockdown started. Um, and I paid the deposit on it, so I haven't actually seen it yet, or checked it out or anything, or paid for it. So I'm hoping they'll let me drive it before. Has it been it. driven in three months? Uh, Has it know. been started in three months? I don't know, I wasn't there. Okay. I've got some jump leads in the back. <laughs> I don't see that. Hopefully, an old school, old school Volvo of the 80s doesn't have anything electronic to drain. This is exactly why you should buy one. No electronics to drain the battery down. Uh, as well as being a sexy car. I'm going to convince everybody that this is a good car and it's worth buying. I'm not buying it off you. Couldn't afford it. It's too expensive. Why wouldn't you buy it anyway? Uh, too cool. Yeah. It's a good car. Never let you down. Low mileage. Half a million miles. Has the Volvo got Bluetooth? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing it hasn't got Bluetooth. Probably hasn't got any drinks holders. Oh, I don't even know it's got aircon. Well, you're lucky it's not the hottest day of the year so far then. Yeah. Is it manual or automatic? Uh, it's manual. Proper manual. Four speed manual with overdrive. I don't think it's got a CD player. I think it's got a 1980s radio cassette player. Oh, you can play your cassettes in it, don't you? <laughs> oh, I've had some fun with my uh, Hey Siri. Go on. Hey Siri. You there? Just a moment. Oh. You're right, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Stand by, please. Oh. He's busy. Busy. Okay, well just, you know, take your time. <laughs> Got all day. Working on that. It's just fun in your hands, is it? Well. <laughs> Bad git. Mm. Mm. It's 
by the way, we just had a McDonald's. <laughs> we did. We he had one too. No, we're going to edit that out. Could you send a text message to Will? You bloody bastard. Send. <laughs> send it. So it's got to be around here somewhere. Look out for it. Hang on, stop, 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 stop. Oh, how exciting. Oh, there it is, there it is. Is it about back that? Back there, yeah. Oh. Look at that. It's like brand new, Tim. It's like brand new. Like, you wouldn't want to seem dead in it. What do you mean? No. You talk like that, you just might be. Certainly a handsome uh, rectangle. I like it. What are your first thoughts? <clears throat> it's alright, there's it a bit more rush to, on the wheel arches than I was expecting. Yeah, so um, we, we didn't film all of that, but uh, <clears throat> we decided to. Um, did you get any of it? I that might have got about two seconds at the beginning where you said, yeah. Yeah, there's a couple of rust spots. Yeah, we we didn't uh, we didn't capture it, but um, there were some rusty rear wheel arches. Um, the exhaust was blowing. Um, headlining, which I thought had been done, was actually sagging on the sunroof. Um, the problem is when you go and see some cars that they're not quite as described. You start mentally doing the maths in your head. Now I overpaid for that car because it had got a massive service history file and it had been molly coddled, but actually it didn't feel like it. It felt like it had got two rusty rear wings. Um, and the headlining and the gasket and Lord knows what else. There was a hole in the in the leather which we told we were told had been reconnolised. Well reconnolised, you explained to me what reconnolising was. Yeah. But that doesn't mean putting a hole in it. It does. <laughs> yeah. So uh yeah, we've decided to leave it, but unfortunately um you know we've got a, a wasted trip. But that happens with cars sometimes, you just get this feeling when you get there that it's just not as described and it's gonna cost a fortune to put right. So if I've disappointed anybody by not picking up uh some kind of cool car. Well, I'm devastated <laughs> that you haven't got a, uh, a Volvo in your car collection. What cars have you got? Well, oh, I've got a Bentley, I've got a Porsche, I've got a Volvo. A well, three quarters of, no, how many miles? The worst Half thing, a million mile Volvo. The worst thing about this is that it proves Tim to be right, because in his mind he had the, exactly what we've just seen. Some piece of crap old half a million mile pretty jaded car and, and I just had this picture of this awesome molly coddled straight out of the box showroom car so uh, yeah will zero posh twat one not only that he used those words and you just heard him use the words proved him to be right honestly I don't I don't think he's ever said that before in his life you've never been right before no there were no. 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 That's the second time it's happened to me this year. In January, I tried to buy a Peugeot 205 CTI, which was um, immaculate, and, um, and I took a train for an hour and a half and got there, and when I got there, the thing just, it wouldn't even run. And on the test drive, it broke down and wouldn't start again. And then the guy said to me, that's all right, they all do that. So I didn't, I didn't buy that one either, but it actually- That was a shame, that, was, that, that could have been a great car. And it broke down on, it broke down on the test drive. And he still wanted me to take it. You have to get up pretty early in the afternoon to catch me at it. I don't think that you should feel bad about it because um, you've got to you've got to make sure it's worthwhile, you're worth worth your time. If you if you're just spending a load on a car that needs a load of work. I uh, I genuinely wanted a Volvo 740. It was like, like I said, the car I grew, I grew up driving. Um, first crash in it and everything. Yeah. But um, you know. I got the impression that it was a really super well maintained, looked after one, but you get a feeling when you see a car, things just don't add up, so all the paint wasn't very good. The two rear rusty wheel arches um, were a different colour, slightly different shade of silver, and even though they said he's only from new and never had an accident, I'm, I'm not sure I believe it because they just don't rust like that. It, it's almost as though the clear coat was really badly put on. Yeah, yeah, the clear coat was peeling off, the silver was a different shade. The silver's the hardest colour to match, so it's always a dead giveaway on a car. Um, and then the fact that the exhaust was blowing, and it, was, it wasn't just blowing now, it was gummed up with some kind of white exhaust gum, which makes me think it wasn't as well maintained as they were trying to make out. So, 
I don't necessarily think they, they were trying to hoodwink me. I just don't think they know the car as well as they thought they did. I, re I reckon he must have done a lot of tinkering on it himself. Yeah. In the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> At about the 250,000 mile mark. Yeah. <laughs> With the first quarter million miles. It's a shame we didn't get enough shots of it really, but I felt really bad filming the thing all over, knowing that I was actually going to reject it. I got, I got out with good intentions to film you going, oh look, you know, I remember this, I remember this from my dad's old one. And it was like, oh gosh. Yeah. It's got rust on. Yeah. Key, key points. Like, uh oh. Yeah. I'm going to lose my deposit. It's better than the full price then. Yeah. You know, and, and also what you'd need to put into it to, uh, yeah, it to get it, to get it uh, halfway decent. It would have needed uh, the rear wings respraying. Yeah, it's about four or five hundred. Rust work. New, new centerpiece of the exhaust at least, um, and all the paint had kind of scuffs and stone chips and rusty bits and things on it. There was um, a dent in the roof. I don't know if you oh, saw the dent in the roof. Yeah, I can't. I can't believe the whole roof liner as well, which is one of the things that you said was had been redone. That's more expense to go to. I think it's just better off out of it. Can of worms. I like buying snot boxes, but not that snotty. Passed the naked man earlier. You got very excited until you realised they hadn't given him a, given him a chalk winky. Stopped in a lay-by for our McDonald's, even though Will didn't eat one. So if I'm not buying a, a Volvo 740, I need something else to add to the snot box list. Any suggestions? Yeah, I did like the sound of the 205. It wouldn't work. Even, even if you got a 205 that was a um, just a, a normal hatchback. See whether you get an old GTI 205. Are they expensive these days? Yeah, yeah, lots. Uh, like eight, eight to ten thousand. Okay. Here's another one. Classic. So your car that you learned to drive in was a Volvo. What was it? 740. 740. I learned to drive. In a Fiat Panda. Come on. Well, they even invented them. Yeah. I quite like Fiat Pandas. Fiat Panda. I think I just like things that remind me of the 80s and 90s when life was simpler and I was younger. Even better. Yeah. Four by four. That little, that little funny off-road. Si the Sizzly. Yeah. They spelled Sizzly. We drove one of those in, it uh, in Italy. We did. Modern one. Times like this in a tunnel, you really want to feel the uh, the noise of the 1.3 diesel engine. Ready? Ah! It's like Lucifer himself urinating on your eardrums. I wanted to have a rant. That sounds like you. While we've got nothing to do in the car and I'll waste a trip. Um, I'm surrounded by people who have ignored the lockdown all the way through and yet still continue to go outside on a Thursday and clap for the NHS. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that the NHS would rather they didn't go and mix with their mates in the parks and have barbecues around their house all the way through lockdown and not clap them instead. Because the clapping doesn't do it, it doesn't pay their rent. And it doesn't stop them filling up the emergency wards with people who've been going to house parties. It's just me. Got any thoughts on that? Yeah, have you got a uniform? Before. The fun police. No, but if you if you work for the NHS, you'd be great. You stand outside clapping outside your house, where I can't even hear you. Yet you still go and mix and keep spreading the disease around. But what, who, why don't you just not what? clap and not go to your mates' houses? But who's going to their mates' houses? Well, neighbours of mine. I know loads of people who don't who ignored the lockdown, ignored the two metre rule, have house parties, garden parties. Okay, it's it's not a law anymore, but it was a law. Me. Nee. Just wanted to get off with just Oh sure. I think it's brought out a lot of uh, different character types. Because I think some people have been everything, you know, leaving an Amazon package on the doorstep for 72 hours. But if you're generally a person under 50, 60, I don't know, I can't wait to have a you know decent hug with my family. <laughs> I've just driven you 300 miles to look at a Volvo 
you didn't even tell me it was a Volvo at the beginning. Did you not really not know? No. You just announced that to me in the car on the way here. And and then and then to go, eh, it's got a tiny speck of rust on it because it's done 500,000 miles. I'm not buying it. <laughs> you can go back and you can buy it for one. Should we go back? Do you want to buy it? Should we go and get McDonald's? Do you want to go and buy it? Oh, I'll tell you what. Fancy a McDonald's. What else grinds your goat about people? Small, posh men with attitude problems. Thank you very much, thank you. I usually have to put them into the back of my mind because I don't start getting annoyed about them. Why, this is a proper rip-off, do you have to pay a TV licence? Well, I don't watch the BBC at all. I don't watch any BBC stuff, and yet, to be able to watch anyone else's stuff, I have to watch adverts, but I have to pay the BBC a tax. And why do I have to pay internet companies for a phone line that I don't use, just so I can have internet? Internet costs three quid, the phone line costs 19 pounds, and I don't even use it, and yet I have to have it to have internet. Rip off tax. Okay, what do you think about that? Well, I'm not gonna answer the BBC question, because that is, that is quite clear. It should be. But no, I want to stick on that. It okay. should it, it should be an ad, a, a commercial enterprise like the others. Put adverts on it and make them pay their own way. It's not fair to make people pay that they don't use it. And I don't care about world service and all that bullshit. I'm not paying for that. Same as I don't pay for things I don't use in any other part of life. I'm not paying for the bloody BBC. Well, I have to pay for it. Nobody watches the BBC in my house. Any BBC products. So why do I have to pay this tyrannical? dictatorial state bloody third world scam tax go on answer that no why is it enforced why don't the other channels get a slice of it and what is it you think the bbc provide that's worth 130 quid a year to someone that's not using it faulty towers no fine what about the internet providers then? internet providers totally agree that's bloody crazy what's the point in the bloody guys living in caravans at the motorway you think well okay they're living away but they're living rent free but they live here obviously so that they can do the roadworks and yet you never see them working on the roadworks they're just sat in their stupid caravans watching tv all the time they must come out at some point put all the cones out and then go back in the caravan and then go back in the caravan watch countdown and, and get paid tea. loads of money for not doing any roadworks and they can stretch it out for years there was one in on the m1 in luton that was about 10 years and I reckon they watched all of Netflix from their caravan. Didn't do any road working. Thanks, buddy. Bye. Useful trip. <laughs> That's it. Sometimes you win them, sometimes you lose them. But uh, I've got to show them all, the, the wins and the fails. Uh, this was a fail. See you next time.